Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. Recently, I've been going through my watercolour supplies and I found this box. This box is over 10 years old and I purchased it from Argos for around £20 if my memory serves me correctly. For those of you who don't know what Argos is, it's basically a physical version of Amazon. This set contains 26 tubes of paint, and it also contained some palettes, a rubber, some paintbrushes and pencils. However, I have lost those over the years. Some tubes of paint are missing, such as a white, a black, which I don't know where they went, a ultramarine blue, which I used in the ultramarine blue comparison video. If you want to see what that colour is, go check that out. I'll leave that in the iCards but that colour has been misplaced. And as well, if I had to guess, the other colour missing may be a red colour, as I don't seem to have as many red tubes currently in this set. If you have not guessed yet, these tubes are Royal and Land Nickel watercolours. 12 milliliter tubes, they are a student brand grade of paint. The tubes contain no pigment information, only colour names and where they were made. They do, however, contain an ASTM label. So on to swatching these colours now. Some of them are still fine after all these years. Some tubes are unopened and some tubes are really dried up. This is due to the fact that they've been opened a very long time and I may not have put the lid back on each tube properly. All of the colours seem quite nice and vibrant and they do flow really well in water and the tubes that are dry do re-wet okay. While I am painting fresh from the tube here I have poured out pans of these paints before and they don't dry too well. They dry quite hard and firm and they really shrink down quite a lot. So if you're going to pour these out into uh, pans I would suggest mixing some honey in with them just to help them re-wet a little bit better. Now, as I said, these are over 10 years old. It is unknown whether Royal and Lang Nickel still use the same mixture for their binder and paint as they do today. You can get their paint today on Amazon and other websites fairly cheaply for around less than £10. As far as I know, they don't offer their paint open stock. So this can be a bit of a disappointment if you run out of colour and want to replace it. One more thing to note with the tubes is that the colour on the wrapper does not match the colour in the tube. This is quite common when it comes to watercolour paints in other brands. However, with some of these paints, there is a massive difference. I don't know whether this is just a difference in general or because I've had the tubes so long that the wrappers have started to fade and change colour. So, the four list of colours that I have swatched out here are Crimson Red Lake Alizarin Crimson Vermilion Deep Yellow Orange Yellow Lemon Yellow Yellow Ochre Gamboge Green Pale, Sap Green, Deep Green, Viridian, Prussian Blue, Cobalt Blue, Cerulean Blue, Violet, Rose, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna and Payne's Grey. I didn't bother to swatch out either the black or the white as I don't use either in my watercolour paintings. Of some of these colours, some did stand out to me. One of the things that stood out was that there was not an awful lot of granulation in the cerulean blue. There was some in the cobalt, but it wasn't as much as some other cobalt colours that I have tried. The ultramarine blue, which I tested in the other video, did granulate quite nicely. Even though there is no pigment information on any of the tubes, you can tell what some of them are such as the violet is supposed to be PB23, whether it is 
containing that pigment or not is unsure. And it's clear that the cerulean blue does not contain true cerulean. Some of these colours do seem slightly similar, such as two of the greens and two of the yellows, which I don't really see much point in having in this set. The rose colour is a really nice pink colour. I don't believe it has any of the rhodamine dye in that Opera does. So I believe this may be a pink similar to a PB19 pink, maybe a magenta. It's kind of hard to tell. But it's definitely a nice primary mixing colour. And as you can see, I am definitely lacking in that fire truck red, like a crimson or a scarlet or a cadmium red light sort of colour. I'm kind of missing that. So that's why I would guess that, that there is a red missing from this set. Due to there being no pigment information available for these paints, light fastness is unsure and unclear. I would have to do a light fastness test to determine how light fast these colours are. I did mix a couple of the colours together to see what I could get in a simple colour wheel. I believe I used the rose, the lemon yellow and the cerulean blue, I think. They did mix together quite nicely and I was happy with the result that I got from that little colour mixing. These are in no way artist grade paints and should not be considered as such, but they are and do seem to be pretty decent student grade paints and are definitely worth a look for those who are getting into watercolour. And as you can see here now that they've dried there's not a massive colour shift either with these paints which is another great thing about them. You can see that there are paints that are lacking in that granulation. I know this was done on hot pressed paper but you could still should still be able to see some granulation in the paint and you can't really. So has anybody else tried Royal and Langnickel watercolours and what do you think of them? Personally I feel they're okay if you're starting out. I may question it with the light fast issues about using them for finished pieces for professional artwork. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it please leave a thumbs up or a comment down below. I will leave all additional information in the description bar. So thank you again guys and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.